Welcome back again, and I've got Jay Smith with me, a soon-to-be author, because he's uh, locked up doing his writing, um, an Islamic polemicist, and somewhat of an expert on uh, all things Quran. So um, I've got him captive, as it were. During the right, okay, a Christian polemicist of Islam, also a Christian apologist. Um, for those of you who are not aware, an apologist is someone who defends their faith. And a polemicist is someone who attacks the uh, arguments of others. Or so I've got some questions for Jay. A polemicist is someone who argues against the faith of others, whilst an apologist is someone who defends their own faith you or still argument have or that position. Need not to offend anybody. <laughs> Good for you, Kate. That's fine. That's great. I'm British. <laughs> okay. No, I'd say attack. I'd say destroy all false arguments that set themselves up against the knowledge of the uh, true God. But, Second okay. Corinthians chapter 10. Good for you. Yeah, it's right now. Okay. So uh, my first question for Jay uh, this evening or this afternoon where he is, is uh, what are the main differences that you find between Yahweh, who is, of course, the God of the Old Testament and the entire Bible, and uh, the character of Allah within the Quran, who says that he is the creator, most merciful, most powerful. Yeah. That, what do you find are the main point of contention? Okay, that's a great question. And, and really, it's, it's the God of this book versus the God of this book, uh, the two different books. This is the Christian book. This is Yahweh. Yahweh, as you say, is the God of, of the Bible. That's the Hebrew name for him. I am who I am is the English translation, ego a me, or on would be the, the Greek translation for that. This is the name that uh, Moses demanded uh, there in, in Genesis 3 when he says, you know, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Exodus 3, when he said, you know, what is your name before he was sent down to Egypt? He said, give me your name. So Who shall I, I say sin? Go ahead. So No, I'm saying he said, who shall I say sent me? Yeah. That's right. Who shall I say? And the reason for that is because he knew uh, that the Israelites would not know who he is, and he needed to have an authority. He needed to show that he was coming from their God, and he needed to know the name of their God so that he could not come with any other name. They, they would ask him this, and this is the name God gave him right there in verse 15. And it's interesting because then God goes on to say, this shall be my name from generation to generation, which means it shall be my name forever, which means it still should be his name today. And this is one of the confusions yes. we have because Muslims are looking at the Arabic Bible, not the English Bible, but the Arabic Bible. And the name for God in the Arabic Bible is Allah, which is the name here in the Quran. And so they're saying, ah, see, we share the same God. We have the same God because we have the same name. Now, K, your name is K. Are there any other Ks in England? I'm sure there are. Yeah. It's a popular name, isn't it? So are you yes. all the same person? No, you're no, not. No, thank goodness, because I just have time for my own stuff. <laughs> <laughs> there are many Ks who have many who share the same name, but they are totally different people. Just because you share the same name in Arabic doesn't mean that you're the same God. Remember, Allah, the name Allah, is pre-Islamic to begin with. It has been, it's found on the coins that are there from the Nabataean era. Uh, we can see Allah is in Mu'awiyah. He has Allah, Bismillah. Uh, he talks about Allah in on his coins. And, and all of these pre-Islamic Arabs refer to Allah because it comes from Ilaha, which is the god of the Nabataeans. The generic name for Dushara, the formal god of the Nabataeans. Generic means the god. Ilaha means the god as Allah means the god. So if you want to say it on that point, and there are some Christians who do say, ah, so therefore we're talking about the God, and we all know that the God, generic, would be the God of Abraham, and that we are all Abrahamic. So since mm -hmm. Jews are Abrahamic, we Christians are Abrahamic, so are the Muslims. They are Abrahamic through Ishmael. We are Abrahamic through Isaac. Therefore, why can't we say the God, Allah, Ilaha, for the God of the Bible as well? The problem with that is this. God is a jealous God, and he does not... He does not share his name with anybody else. Remember in Deuteronomy 18, I love it when Muslims bring me to Deuteronomy 18 because they always like to show that that's Muhammad's name there in Deuteronomy 18, verse 18, where God says to Moses at that time, I will send, I will send a prophet like unto you from amongst your people. 
people don't read verse 19 and 20. When you read verse 19 and 20, he says, be careful of any prophet who does not come in my name. And what is his name? Well, it's right there in yes. verse 17. Yahweh in verse 17. And then what does he say in verse 20? If a prophet comes not saying what I say, or if a prophet comes in another name, put him to death. Ooh, I love that. So even in Deuteronomy 18, it looks like um, but yeah. it, God is saying, if you do not know my name, if you aren't coming in my name, then you don't represent me. The same way Moses, that's yeah. why Moses needed this name. So when you have in this book here a God that is really not Yahweh, I mean, I don't know, I don't see Yahweh anywhere in this book. Have you seen it? I, I know that he has 99 names, and as far as I know, none of them are Allah. Well, I also uh, know that Muhammad's father was called Abdullah. Okay, but they're and not. Apparently, no. Muhammad was the first one to come. I'm looking Sorry? for you. No. no, none of them. <clears throat> or Allah. He's no. not here in any of those names. Those 99 names, they just describe him. And they're not really names. In fact, did you know Allah is not a name? It's a title. Uh, it's a title. I think it's, yeah, a generic kind of. Like the a God. brand name, as it were. It's not a name. If I were to yeah. come to you and you ask me who I am, I say, I'm the man. You say, well, what's your name? I don't know. I'm the man. What would that say? <laughs> I challenge that statement. Half of all yeah. humanity is, ma is yeah. our men. Well, males. And so you can see why you've got to find a name that defines that God, not a title. Allah is nothing more than a title, barred yes. from the Mountains. So I would suggest to any Muslim that say we share the same God. I love to do this. Okay, I always do this whenever a Muslim comes up to me and says we share the same God. I go out and I shake their hands. I say, God bless you. I'm so glad that you have finally agreed after 1400 years that Allah of the Quran was able to enter time and space and walk and talk with Adam and Eve. I'm so glad you have finally admitted after 1400 years that Allah of the Quran is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. He is triune. I'm so glad you have finally admitted that Allah of the Quran came to earth, died on the cross, and rose again, and that Allah of the Quran is the Son of God. By that time, he, the Muslim has pulled his hand out of mine. Says, Do you oh, ever get the that. hands in yours? Yeah. They said, no, we didn't <laughs> say that. I said, yes, you are. You must have because a grip. If you believe we share the same God, you've got to, you've got to agree to those four things. Because those are the four things that yes. separate my God from your God. Those are the four cardinal areas that say that my God enters time and space. Your God is incapable of coming to earth. That means he cannot, he is limited. Mm -hmm. And I want nothing to do with a God that can't, cannot, cannot come down to where I am. I want a God who has come here. I want a God who has walked here. I want a God who has related to me face to face like he did with Adam and Eve. I want a God who is able to wrestle with Jacob. I want a God who is able to have that relationship with me that no other God can. And only the God of the Bible can do that. So already, number one, you're out. Allah is not my God. Number two, I want a God who's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Why? Because that is the triune God that I see all the way through the, new, the Old and New Testament. And yes. that is the God that I don't see anywhere in this book. God is one. They keep on saying that. God is one. God is one. God is one. He's a modality. That's what one means. If he's a modality, that means he has no personality. Because by definition, anybody that, has, that is able to love or to have compassion or to be gracious... Remember what, what I've just done there? Those three, who is Al-Rahman Al Al-Rahim. He is the compassionate one. He is the merciful one. That is part of the Bismillah that's found in the very first verse of the Quran. They, by definition, yeah. love, compassion, and mercy require an object, do they not? You have to have an object to yes, love. Yes, you, you have can't to have love an something. Object. Yes. Exactly, Kay. Yes. Which then means that Allah, if it, where is his object of his love and compassion within the Godhead, if he's not triune? You can only understand that if he is... Who is he loving before the creation of the world? Yeah. Or the Who was he Adam merciful to other... when it was he alone without even the Son or the Spirit? It must have been terribly lonely. <laughs> can you then understand why I love the God of the Bible? Because from the very beginning, God the Father yeah. has loved God the Son. From the very beginning, he has loved the God the Holy Spirit. Which means if I am made in his image, as I see in Genesis 1.26, I am loving, I am compassionate, I am merciful, because I get that from the Godhead. I'm Because I'm made in his image as such, which means I'm a social animal. And therefore, Muslims, I want to ask Muslims, if you're watching this, where do you get your relationship from? You can't get it from a monad God who is just one. You can only get it from a triune God. And that's why we do not share the same God. That's number two. Number three, 
to show that love and that mercy and compassion, God had to come down and do something for us that we couldn't do ourselves. He had to eradicate sin. He had to come down, take on human form, and he had to take on our guilt. He had to take on our penalty. And the only way that you can take on the penalty for sin is that there must be life given and there must be blood shed. That's it, Leviticus chapter 17. Life has to be given, blood has to be shed. That means your life has to be given, your blood has to be shed, which means if that's the case, since we're all sinners, we all have to die. But we still, that's still not good right. enough because it has to be he who was sinned against. That blood has to be shed. That life has to be given. Who who sinned against? Every sin is against God. That means it has to be God himself who had to take on that penalty. God yes. himself who had to take on that guilt. And that's exactly what God did by coming by Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago, dying on the cross to take on all that penalty of sin on himself. Only he could do that because only he is the sinless one. It has to be someone who is the sinless one. Now, remember, the Quran says that there's only one person who is sinless in chapter 19, verse 19, and his name is Issa. Ooh, I love it. At least the Quran gets that child. right. At least the Quran gets that right. So that's why it had to happen with only God. Only God could have done this. And that means if they, the Muslim believes that, they, that Allah is the same as the Bible in the Quran, then they're going to have to accept that Allah, but not the Allah of the Quran, the Allah of the Bible, did come down, die on the cross, and rose again. And because he died and rose again, he destroyed death, which is what Jesus said he would do in John 10, didn't he? Behold, the Son of Man will die and rise again. He prophesied it even before it happened. He was going to die and rise again, and he said that he's going to do. That means he himself was going to take on that penalty. So that's number three. Number four, Son of God, if you believe we share the same God, then you're going to have to accept the fact that God has a son and has always had a son. Jesus has always been the son of God, will always be the son of Eternally God, become the son of God at one time. This is eternal. This is an eternal divine name. And in fact, anytime that Jesus claims to be the son of God, he's saying, I am God. That's a divine title. Yes. No wonder when Jesus yes. did that, God is one. Did, in front of Caiaphas, with all those Jews present, they were all leaders, when he had, was asked, are you the son of God? Not a son of God like I am, the son of God. Definite article. What did Jesus say? Yes, it is as you say. Look at the reaction of Caiaphas. He tore his robe, turned towards the Sanhedrin, and said, what further proof do we need this man has blasphemed? That's why I love my Jesus, because those four areas set him apart from any other God. Only our God enters time and space and come can walk and talk with us. Only our God is triune. Only our God came and died and rose again for us. And only our God has a son who can do that, who can do it. He's the one that that's his job is to come to earth. Those are the theophanies all the way through the Old Testament. Every time you see God entering time and space and walking and talking, wrestling with Jacob, leading the children of Israel as a cloud during the day and a pillar of fire during the night. That is Jesus. That is God on earth. He's done it all the way through history. We don't have a problem with him entering time and space because we got a big, big God. What a God we have. And I don't want anything to do with this God because he's incapable of doing all four of those areas. So please don't confuse the two. Anybody listening to it, Allah of the Quran is not Yahweh of the Bible. We have two completely different gods. Their God is absolutely hopeless and helpless. Our God is magnificent, is eternal, and yet he Amen. can also take on human form and come and die for me. That's a God I want. That's a God I want to follow. And that's a God I want you to follow as well. God bless you. Great question, Kay.